Welcome back, TCM fans. Today, we're going to break down everything we've seen from the beginning until now, because I think this point right here with the Community Hub is the breaking point to where after this, we're really going to be getting some gameplay information, some solid gameplay information, not gameplay footage or screenshots. Those will be surprises and extra cherries on the top. But I think from this point on, Gun Media is going to be putting out some solid information on the foundation of the gameplay, seeing as how they've given us the maps. So with that, the latest community hub that was just posted, titled The Maps of Texas. Now, for the most of this, you guys can read it all yourself. The link is down in the description for the community hub. I'm just going to be taking the key points out and discussing those. So first, outside of the fact that uh, Sumo, Nottingham, and Gun have used creative freedom to bring a lot of these maps to life, especially the parts that we haven't seen, and that also they have applied story elements to each of these environments, um, take a look at this sentence right here. Strategies that work in a windowless basement may not be the best choice in a room with sunlight streaming in, and the advantages you have in the shadows may disappear when you find yourself outside in the bright Texas sun. So let's just stop and dig into that for a second. This means that from the screenshots and the videos we've seen, there will be three different time of days for each map, daytime, sundown, and complete darkness of night. So this essentially means, you guys, that each map, even though we only have three basic maps, because the time of day, because the lighting plays such an essential role to the gameplay of this game, we essentially have here nine different maps total. Because the, the way that you play in the daytime is going to be totally different from when you're playing at nighttime. So, for example, on the family map, when you're running around outside of the house at nighttime, you're going to be a little bit more comfortable running around outside the house because of the lighting, obscuring the view. Uh, maybe the, the killers might miss you because they just can't see as well at nighttime. Whereas opposed, if you're running around outside of the house in the daytime, of course, they are going to see you a lot easier and you're going to have to think and apply yourself differently because of the time of day. So in terms of players turning up their gamma so they can see other players at nighttime and cheating and whatnot, the devs and gun have said that they are coming up with ways or have came up with a way to uh, deter that and to keep people from doing it. Now, how does light and dark work in this game specifically? I think there has to be a little bit more to it than the player just, you know, seeing you with their own two eyes. Now, this is something that I've talked about in Friday the 13th a lot. I really hated the gimmicky teleportation gameplay, and I really wanted it to be something where the player just uses their own two eyes to see somebody, and then they have to apply their strategy and tactics when it comes to chasing them down. Now, I think that, like, there's a little bit more to it than that, because when you think about it, okay, the survivors, when they're in the dark, how do they see? You know, they have the same handicap as the killers. What makes them able to get around a little bit better than the killers can? Because the killers are essentially seeing the same thing. They're in the same kind of darkness. Wouldn't both people be handicapped? So there's a big question there. What is applied to the gameplay that makes it so the survivors can sneak around easier in the dark while the killers are hunting in the dark? They would both have the same kind of handicaps going on in terms of lighting. So that's a good question to bring up. What is the gameplay surrounding the survivors versus the killers? It says right here that shadows and traversal methods became the hallmark of successful players on the development team. So again, they're establishing that lighting and putting yourself in the shadows is a very important thing in this game. Some of you may start to think of Hitman in games like that where you're trying to stalk around 
and hunt down your prey. Of course, that game did not really rely on lighting as much, but we've played some games out there where you do rely on lighting and being in the shadows to maneuver around. But is there going to be some kind of gameplay gimmick around being in the dark, or is it straight up going to be reliant on the player's own two eyes to be able to see in the dark? And now we move on to the next uh, comment. Through all of our maps, we tried to capture a feeling of progress as victims moved through each zone. It was important to reward success with more space to breathe and plan, while also raising the pressure on the family members to catch victims before they escape. There is a satisfying moment in a match when a family team realizes a victim has progressed past an integral threshold. Can the family stay cool under pressure and hunt the victims, or will the victims capitalize on the confusion to make a break for it? This is where I'm going back to my last video. You guys go watch the Slaughterhouse video because I talk about this a lot in there. Um, okay, so this kind of rings true with what I was talking about, where I think that these players are going to start off in the tunnel. They're going to start off in a small space. And I think that you're already going to be kidnapped. I think that you're already starting in a place of submission, hence the name of victims for the players, and you're going to have to get out of the situation. So I think we're starting, we're at a point where the family, you know, they've already tried going in and they got caught by the family. The family bounds them up and then I think that's where the match, the match starts with some of them may be getting out. Maybe, I don't know if this is, you know, would be gameplay worthy, but it would be kind of cool if you actually start off bound up. Like you can't do anything because you're bound. Other than maybe walking around and, but you can't do anything. You can't fight. You can't use your hands. You got to get free. But you find something. I don't know, like you get something and you free yourself and then comes the next part where you now have to get out of the tunnels there's going to be uh, I feel like there's going to be objectives you have to do to get yourself out of the tunnels with everybody else I don't know if everybody can break out of the tunnel at the same time or if one person can do it it, it, it feels like it's going to be a situation where you're going to have like they said these little success moments where you're bound and captive, but one person may... Think of a horror movie where one person has made a break for it, right? And they tell the others, hey, I'll be back. I, I promise I'm going to come get you. And they go out to a tool shed and grab some scissors. They come back, get the rest of their friends free, and now all of them are trying to make a break out of the building to find a way to get out. So may, something similar to that, maybe, that kind of feeling, you know? Uh, where one person gets out and, and then uh, now they're above ground, right? They're, they're out of the tunnels, this closed, enclosed spacing, and now they're out and above in the map. This is going to make it harder for the family members now because now the victims are above ground. They're in the bigger portion of the map. They have a lot more places to hide. They're given a lot more breathing room outside of these tunnels and now the family members will have to fan out and uh, use the whole map to find these kids. Uh, and I'm thinking above ground, now they are going to have to complete another set of objectives. You know, they had their objectives in the tunnels, but now that they're above ground, they have another set of objectives. They have to get those done. And then once they are done, they can make a break for it and escape out of the map. However it is, they're going to escape. I don't feel like any of this is going to be like Friday the 13th at all, where you have to call the cops and stuff like that. Who knows? Maybe maybe they will have a little feature in a map like that where you can call the police. But I feel like if they did do something like that, it would be a little it'd have to be a little bit more interesting and interactive and not just cops showing up at the exit and then you could exit, you know. It'd have to be like something that actually is cool, you know, where the cops come in. If they did do stuff like that, you know, the cops are gonna have to get there and do stuff and it's actually pretty neat. So I have a feeling for now that it's just gonna be something simple like you get out, you get above, you do some kind of objective and then you can for example, in the family house, run down the driveway and get the hell out of Doge. What are the objectives? 
I don't know. Like, well, this, these are things that we're going to have to learn. The things that keep the round going for about 30 minutes instead of just them getting out of the tunnel, running down the driveway, they're gone. You have a five-minute game on your hand. So then it goes on to say, The family will need to keep their eyes and ears open and depend on all of the tools at their disposal, including teamwork, to search out and discover where the victims are before they are able to escape the family's clutches. So, think about this. Before they are able to escape the family's clutches. Okay, so let's think about this. It sounds like the way that they're wording this, it sounds like that the family is not just going to be able to find them and kill them straight up like Jason does in Friday the 13th. But I think it's going to be more about catching them, bounding them, and putting them somewhere and then giving them over to Leatherface to do the job, to do the final job. Um, so speaking of that, let's go back to the first trailer, right? Now, we've seen the comparison video of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and how amazing it's, it looks. So suffice it to say, we might be looking at real-time footage right here we threw it off as CGI at first, like they just made a CGI trailer to show us this game. But all of these shots you're seeing might be real-time footage from the in-game engine of the game, which is very impressive. But now we go here to the tunnel scene. We see a guy hanging up. Let's just assume, you guys, that all of this is from gameplay, like little pieces of the actual gameplay of the game and not just some CGI trailer they threw together for us to look at. Let's assume. Now, I do say assume. We are theorizing, so don't don't place this all as staple in your head, but you know, you got the guy being dragged off right there and you got a guy hanging up. So I feel like there's a little bit more than just finding them and just straight up killing them. I think, I really do think that somehow the hitchhiker and the cook are setting them up for Leatherface. Now, if you guys go back to the original film, the cook mentions that he doesn't like killing. You ain't nothing. Me and him do all the work. I, I just can't take no pleasure in killing. So it might be a thing where they are just setting them up for Leatherface. Maybe they can kill. Maybe they can all kill, but it's not as fast as just finding them and slaughtering them on the spot type of thing. Again, I can be wrong. I'm just theorizing, but I'm just thinking of how these rounds would last a little bit longer than just finding them and killing them immediately. Because it feels like, you know, if you were in the tunnels and you encountered one of them, that it would be a little easy if they found you right away and just boom, you're dead. So... I don't know. I'm just kind of coming up with stuff off the top of my head. And then it continues to say, We've said before that victims should be silent, shut off the lights, and stick to the shadows. These are the core concepts to strive for. Though there are times that players can't or won't be able to follow these guidelines. Now, the guidelines are to stick to the shadows and be quiet and, and don't get seen. But then at the very end, it says, In those moments where you are seen choices must be made now this is where i think that gun is done teasing us with little tiny teasers and they're after this breakdown video they're gonna start putting light no pun intended on the gameplay that that is that is going to be the foundation of how we play this game but the way that it's coming together and the way they keep talking about it it seems like we're gonna have a really nice suspenseful fun back and forth with the family members you're gonna have the four victims trying to work together to get out of the tunnels get out of the house what because we don't know what's going to be locked up in these places you know when you get out of a get out of the tunnels are the doors locked what are you know how are we going to get out is it going to be some kind of like thing where we have to find a key open it up get out of the house you know how many thresholds for example on the family map are there once you get out of the tunnels then you got to get out of the house once you're out of the house, then you got to get out into the yard and find whatever it is you got to find. And, or I don't know, maybe you don't have to find anything. And, and then you run your ass down the driveway and get the hell out of there. So 
who knows how hard that is or how, you know, I think the slowness, you know, when you think about that, just getting out of the tunnels, getting up into the house, getting out of the house and then getting down the driveway, it sounds like a quick and easy thing, right? But when you have three family members running around and you don't know where any of them are and you have to hide in the shadows constantly and prevent from making any noise, you know, this could be a long process of getting out of the house and just getting down the driveway and getting out between four people. So hopefully, you know, Gunn's going to start sharing how they made all this interesting. You know, what would be the reasoning? You know, when I'm thinking about the gameplay that we've just described, I'm trying to come up with um, in my head, like, okay, what's the reason that they would go all the way back into the backyard over there when their goal is to get down the driveway and get the hell out of there? There wouldn't be much use to go into the backyard unless there are other objectives that they have to do once they get outside of the house, you know. Uh, so, you know, as long as Gunn has placed objectives all over the map that might be randomized on various portions, even when you're out of the tunnels, out of the house, out onto the main grounds, um, the objectives along with the time of day changes will all work together to keep the matches interesting probably even more interesting than Friday the 13th was and then you'll have a reason for wanting to play these over and over and over just as long as the roller coaster ride is fun now I won't talk about that too much but the roller coaster ride is the suspense of the game the how fun is it to uh, have a killer standing right in front of you but they don't see you because you're hiding in the long grass perfectly or you're in a bush so good or you're, you know, you're sitting in the bushes and you're watching one of your friends be chainsawed to death. Uh, you know, those moments that make you go, whoa, you know, like what in the heck is going on right now? Like those suspense moments are will what keep this roller coaster ride going. And I feel like Gun nailed that about 70%, 65, 70% in Friday the 13th, but it could have been so much better this Texas Chainsaw game might push it the rest of the way. It feels like the game is ramping up to be a darker, more visceral experience than Friday the 13th was. And I think that that is what, that's the ingredient this genre needs to take it to the next level. We won't know until the game starts to come out. I'm very excited. That about wraps up my breakdown about everything that we've seen so far and what they've told us. Uh, go watch the rest of the videos. I have some good talks on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one when they give us a little bit more. Bye-bye.